get three hits in a row. If they're able to do that off of the Huskies, they're gonna be in really good shape here. Well, this is a fun battle to start. It's Ruby Malin, who of course is an outstanding freshman for this Washington team in the circle. She's had a fantastic start to her college career. She leads the team in ERA. She has seven games with 10 or more strikeouts and she was first team all Pac-12. That is a very hard feat to accomplish in your first season, knowing what we know about the league. But then on the flip side, Seneca, great game yesterday for McNeese, and she is going to be right back where she belongs to start this thing off. Three hits and five at-bats. Yeah, one thing to note for Seneca as a slapper whenever you're facing a pitcher like Malin who likes to go up in the zone, kind of away from you, it's important to stay on it. We saw it with Sammy Reynolds on that rise ball. She struck out. That front shoulder, if as a slapper, if you're peeling off towards force at all, you're gonna struggle. And I mean, Malin, she is no stranger to strikeouts, 178 on the season, not a lot of walks. So whenever it's close to the zone, you as a hitter know you have to go after it. 2-1 to Seneca, swings and misses at that. talked to Heather Tarr about Malin and she said you know at the beginning Pac-12 opening weekend I think everybody learns a tough lesson when you're a freshman but she's really settled into the season and again she's turned into the A's for the Huskies. Seneca again blue potential but shallow enough that Reynolds can grab it. This one looked like Seneca wasn't sure she should go for that low screw ball that Malin likes to toss in or put her hands towards where the rise ball is going. You could see her talking to her teammates. That is going to be the trouble that McNeese will have today. That is the adjustment that they're going to have to make constantly throughout the game because that Ma Malin, she's known for changing up the zones. Strike there brings up Reese Reyna. And it looks like Malin wants to talk to Sydney Stewart, who is catching today. I love that from a pitcher who's so young. She threw that pitch, and right away, that tells me she saw something in that swing. She saw something in the stance, the way the footstep, the load, whatever it was. Hey, I want to throw this pitch because I think it'll beat this swing. Let me call time. Let me talk to my catcher. Let's get this pitch called. All freshman battery for the Huskies today with Stewart behind the plate. She caught yesterday as well in that win. Coach Tarr said she likes to use that freshman battery too. She, she wants them to grow with one another. She likes them to be able to understand each other, especially if they have, you know, four years ahead of each other. Right. Yeah, imagine what they're going to do <laughs> senior year. It's kind of scary to think about. I mean, look at them now, right? 1-1, one, one. another strike. Applause for, from the Washington fans here. There's a, another great crowd. I don't know if it's the heat outside. I mean, we already knew Ruby Malin threw in the upper 60s, low 70s, but that pitch just felt like it homed right in there. One, two, offering. Reyna looks to split the gap. Holdorf dives, but she can't collect. We 
Washington. They love their defensive shifts. That is one thing that McNeese out hit Minnesota, not necessarily because they hit them so far and so hard. They hit them where the shift is not. And that is something that even with the range of the shortstop, Holter's not able to make that play in time. And then with the speed, not able, even if she did catch it cleanly, not able to get that out. Well, you could see Stork give it a nice long look at Reyna after that pitch because Reyna has 24 stolen bases on the year. She is, you know, really good. Really good at that. <laughs> really fast. This <laughs> entire team is in general, but she leads the way. Gomez hacks and misses. Chloe Gomez had a fantastic day yesterday. Two for four. She also earned two walks. Of course, this is a McNeese team. This is their third time in the NCAA tournament in a row. So they have high expectations, and they were not shocked at all that they beat Minnesota. That was an expectation that they had. McNeese reminds me, because I mean, they're a smaller school in Louisiana. They're not a power five school, but they remind me of Washington. The similarities are almost uncanny. It's their style of play the talent, the way they recruit athletes, and then have them play wherever they need to play. Very similar, that one just missed. A little low on that pitch. Malin wanted that one, but I think that was the right call. Two, two. Gomez swings and misses. Reyna's on her way, and the throw is way off. But luckily, Klingler was there. It's a great backhand by Klingler. That she was there, but that was to her backhand yeah. side. That is not an easy pick to make, especially when you're not expecting it to come to you. But we talked about the threat of speed. So even with the second out, it's risky. But that is how McNeese plays. They push that envelope. And I'm pretty sure Washington is going to push right back. Yeah, we saw Washington aggressive on the base paths yesterday as well against Northern Colorado. I think they were trying to close the door early on that game. And it, you know, worked about 50% of the time. They did get a little caught with Klingler on her way to third. However, you know, I think at this point in the season, you don't want to change your identity as a team. You want to keep with what's been working and what got you here. Yeah, I mean... That's the way you know how to play. If you try to change anything in postseason, you're going to struggle as a team. This one, a bouncer. Reyna's going to take third. See that infield, the middles come in and talk to Malin really quickly. That pitch was a screwball, kind of got away early on. McNeese offensively, 142 stolen bases, 188 free bases. 2-0 to Phillips, slams that one into the netting. Yesterday, they only had two batters on third base all day. Now they have a batter on third, and Emily Phillips, I mean, Transferred from James Madison. She's second on the team in batting average. She is somebody who has a lot of power. So if she's able to get a ball to fly into the gap, easy score. McNeese might come out on top. Yeah, Phillips three hits yesterday. Just a part of what was a, a really strong offensive game. I mean, McNeese had actually more hits than Washington did in their run rule game. They just got caught leaving players on, but that was a story for Minnesota as well. And again, we were in a stalemate for so long that we went to 13 innings. McNeese finally scored in the top of the 13th after not scoring since the fourth inning. Phillips, that's a light one, but she got a piece of it. Go back again to the ability to string hits together. That is what the best teams do. I think of Oklahoma whenever 
they go off and they score a ton of runs. I think of Alabama today, whenever they went up, they scored 12 runs that game. That was huge. It's those multi-hit innings. That is where, even if you have less hits, that gives you the momentum. Payoff from Phillips, swing and a miss. That's a big one from Malin. And a runner is left stranded at third for McNeese. They can't take the lead because the they said is they have to play cowgirl softball. And I think the biggest number, very equal stats there that we saw from that game. But the biggest thing that stood out to me is free bases. And whenever you have the speed like that, free bases you cannot give up because that's a stolen base to second. That's a pass ball on a runner's at third. That very easily could have turned into a run for McNeese. Yeah, McNeese is perhaps going to want that one back. Just saw the bottom of the first inning, Reyna, who's the speediest player on that roster, has made it to third and couldn't be knocked home. Malin just closed the lid on the inning. So it's Sanders again in the circle. Kelly Lynch. This one bounces. Foul. Almost. Barely foul. Is that one just to touch the base before it hopped over? Would have had Kelly Lynch sitting pretty on second, but you can see the way it rolls. Just foul. Especially from the view we have here in the booth, we can pretty much see straight down left field line. The charges. You sure? <laughs> you sure that was foul? Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, Lynch had a hit yesterday and an RBI to go along with that. A lot of the Huskies got to go around a few times yesterday. whenever you pass that very well. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with Washington is that they're not a one-trick pony. They have a lot of depth on this roster, which if you're just thinking about teams that can make a really deep run, they sort of have the pieces, but it's difficult. I mean, you look at this regional, there's a lot of competition for them to even just get out of this one. Yeah, and thinking of yesterday, Klingler home run right after that, Sammy Reynolds laid down a bunt, yeah. so they can also score multiple different ways. Again, Lynch, a dual threat player on this roster. She can pitch as well. Using her over at first, though, for the last two games. One, two, that one hops before it crosses. First change up for Sanders. That wasn't not just a strike, but a taken strike. Two, two, Lynch skies this one up in the infield. Torres is gonna call everyone off and get under it. And four straight retired to start the game for Sanders. Well, we talked so much about Klingler and her home run yesterday, but Jalen Alchin had a similar shot right to that center field wall. I mean, that was absolutely crushed as she goes deep into center field. Back is Arjuan, and it's gone! Go off, Alchin! An absolute smash. This ball was ripped way farther than the home run last night. And especially at nighttime, that's hard to do. During the day, you, you don't think it goes as far. This one, Olchen got all of. Look at that. Short to contact, long through extension. Her barrel got on plane fast and in a hurry. And it hits the roof of the shed out there in center field. And the Husky fans are fired up. That was smashed 
and about 20 feet left of where last night's home run was. <laughs> they like that center field area. Silent Rain Espinoza. Same spot, Arjuan tracking back at the wall. She makes the out. Now the adjustment was made by the Huskies. Two back-to-back -back hammered up in the zone. Both of those really great job racking that ball down. That's not an easy ball, especially with the sun directly overhead. That's not an easy ball for Ardrin to be able to catch right at the wall, right at the warning track. But right now, I think it's pretty easy to see what the Huskies are hunting. They made the adjustment first inning. They were expecting a down ball pitcher. I'm pretty sure that they were preparing in their warm-ups for Tate. They were not expecting number 24 Sanders to take the mound. And with that, whenever the ball was up, they were not looking for that pitch. Mentally, they weren't in that headspace. And I think that was the adjustment they talked about in the huddle of, okay, those were the ones that we swung and missed at. Let's bring up our hands. Let's raise up our eyes. And well, you've seen the result. And there it is, a ball up in the zone, swung at. That is the pitch that they're hunting. If you're McNeese, stay low. Stay low in the zone, flip that change in often. Not the end of the world that you give up a solo shot, but I want to end this inning here against Holtorf. We have a violation on the pitcher. Empire was saying whenever she stepped on the mound, her hands actually came in and out of the glove. So the ball was in her hand, glove was separate. But once you step on the mound, once you come together, you have to keep them together until you pitch the ball. So if you try to bring them out and then back in without stepping off the mound, that's an illegal pitch. So that's a ball automatically on her, and it's a 2-2 two -two count. And we saw a legal pitch yesterday as well. So it's certainly something they're looking out for in the NCAA tournament, which makes sense. It's always in postseason. Mm, yeah. I feel like I can say that as a fresh former player. Postseason umpires would really harp and hone in on that. I think this is what we're going to see this year. 2-2, Two -two, Holt Torf skies this one. Foul territory, Otto underneath. Ends the inning. But Jadlyn Ulchin, she's feeling it in the regionals. Back-to-back -back <laughs> days with homers to center field. Is the most important game of a regional right here. Because it... You always want to win the first one, but getting to the winner's bracket final right now. So both of these teams are undefeated. If you win, you have to get beat twice in the same day, back to back. If you lose, you have to battle back and then get to the championship game on Sunday and then win twice. It's a much, much harder road. Both these teams know what's at stake and they know what their advantages are. Washington, they want to host, or they are hosting, and they want to host again in Supers. Mm -hmm. They want to continue on. They're fired up. It's been a while since they were at the World Series, and they're hungry to be back. McNeese, first things first, both their aces through a ton of innings yesterday. They would love the extra time to have those pitchers rest. This one foul from Torres and caught cleanly. How about that? Love that. Well, she might have to suit up. I know. Is it? Really? Call him in. <laughs> well, you got Mariana Torres and Riley Bouvier both due up in this inning. Two players that, of course, were responsible for the runs coming through in the top of the 13th inning. And they needed two because Minnesota got a home run from Natalie Den Hartog that cut the lead to one in the bottom of the 13th. So actually, you know, getting to really push them to that victory and not a 14th inning. One, two to Torres, takes it inside and 
They'll call that a ball. Malin, there's been a few pitches on that inside corner that she wants, but I mean, this zone on that inside corner, it's tight. If you're off a little bit, if you're too high, too low, it won't be called. So she has to know that when placing her pitches. I thought it was a great pitch, especially for the count. One ball, two strikes, that's, that's where you want to place that. Got it that time around. That one floated in there by Malin. And a big smile from her. She's fired up on that pitch. Watch the way it crosses over. So that actually started on the outside half of the plate and crossed over. Very floaty, very different from the 67 mile an hour pitch that was thrown just one before. Bouvier takes a strike outside corner. So three straight strikeouts for Ruby Malin, two last inning. And then she says, all right, let's just continue this K train. I'll start off my next inning, the bottom of the second with that again. And they were crucial strikeouts because, remember, Reyna was on the base pads after a little infield single. And because of that, you know, had to be cautious, had a wild pitch mix in there. So Reyna ended up moving to third. And so Malin had to make sure she didn't get home. Well, Bouvier was our player of the game yesterday. You see three RBI, and of course, she had a two-run shot as well. That one soars over, but nobody on, so not really an issue for Malin. Looked over to the dugout and said, oh, sorry. Tells you the frame of mind that she's in. Very loose, very light right now. Sorry, Coach, I'll, I'll place this next one here. Well, I thought it was interesting when we talked to Brooklyn Carter, another freshman on this roster yesterday. She immediately said, we're hunting for a national championship. And so even the young players on this roster, they know and they're hungry. There's very high expectations for this Huskies team. They really believe they can do it. And again, it starts here, and I'd like to get to Sunday just kind of easy breezy and not have to play another one today. Sword out foul territory. Lynch, can she get there? Yes. This one, it's always difficult whenever it's right there on the fence, right by the batter that's waiting on deck. You see her run out of her way. Important thing to note as an on-deck batter, if you're in that on-deck circle, you don't have to move. You can stay there. Kersleen Moreno in the batter's box with two outs and nobody on for McNeese. one just a little chopper Lynch has it picks it up and steps on first so it's three up three down for Ruby Malin she gets a strikeout to start the thing first two pitches they are going after that and that is why they crush that ball that is why this is their 29th straight appearance because they are constantly on the hunt whenever I think of great teams I don't think of them as being passive or on their heels, they're always on their toes. They're always chasing enough is never enough. How can we be better? How can we be at the next level? And I mean, we spoke with Brooklyn Carter yesterday and that's what she was saying. How can I be better? Where can I place the ball? Where can I go? That one on the inside half, right field is way off that line. And Brooklyn Carter was a very smart slapper. She saw that and I think she wanted to take that one down the right field line. Well. Carter, three singles yesterday, and they were all infield singles. As she bounces this one up to short, zipped over. That's how you have to beat her. Uh, handled nicely by Reyna. I mean, look 
look at the transition time right here. So one, two, and on that second hop, you immediately have to release. Because Carter was one step away. It's that fast. But the defense for McNeese, they are stellar. They have been showing out today. Well, McNeese is one of the top defensive teams in the country. Did have a, a costly error yesterday, but were able to bounce back from it. But hovering around top 10 in fielding percentage in the country. Well, Klingler is up. Always dangerous. Something that I've noticed from yesterday and continuing on to today, the crowd, the team would be really loud. But then there's this moment where it gets really quiet. And this is a loud stadium right now. It gets really quiet right as the pitch is being delivered because everybody is waiting to see what will number eight Bailey Klingler do. 3-0. And she's gonna walk. Well, two outs, runner on first here for Washington. Reynolds yesterday with her multi-hit game extended her on-base streak to 20. Consistent. Lays out a bunt. Sanders picks it up, throws to first. But Klingler. Oh, that's going to end the inning, yes. Sanders was like, a little hesitation. what's going on? <laughs> but it does. <laughs> I thought we were out of here. Circle today, she's meant a lot to your team this entire year. What about her has led to her to this moment starting in a regional uh, in front of a home crowd? Uh, well, I think yes, Ruby Malin's development started probably right after she said she's going to be a Husky. Uh, she made a commitment to herself to be as good as she could be when she got here, and um, she's she's been doing a good job for us. And um, like to give her a little bit more run support, but uh, we'll see what she can do here. Speaking of run support, what is the game plan as you guys are looking to add on and tack on a few more runs? Yeah, I just think we got to get better pitches to hit and, um, you know, just kind of go to work throughout some at-bats. Some of these at-bats weren't lasting very long. But, uh, again, we'll see how we do with that, too, as the game evolves. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Again, that was Heather Tarr, head coach for the Washington Huskies. Of course, won a national championship with them in 2009. Most recently went to the World Series in 2019. There was a handful of players that are still on this roster that were on that team. But, you know, the bulk of this group has not experienced it yet. It was that, ni that 19 team was in the national championship, too. They were right. a very good team. Yeah. Four players left on that roster. Klingler was at Texas A&M, so she was not a part of it. Arjuan, Seneca, do up for McNeese. Interesting, we heard Coach mention, you know, Ruby Malin and her journey. She was actually recruited as a hitter. That's what Ruby told us. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah, so she can smack <laughs> it pretty well to get that recruitment from Washington, but she's just turned into a pitcher here. Um, she was pitching. She was a dual threat player, but she was told by Heather Tarr this massive list of things like this is exactly what you need to do to be on our team and be successful and Tarr said she came in you know to freshman year and she had done all of those things and then some and so they were a little bit shocked by just kind of the competitive edge that she has proven and again that's why she's the ace on this roster. Yeah. One thing 
that maybe not a ton of people know, but Jordy Ball at Oklahoma and Ruby Malin, they're from the same travel ball team from high school. They lived in Nebraska about what, 15, 20 minutes apart. They're very well accustomed to it. And I think of Jordy Ball her freshman year, standout pitcher, didn't hit. Yeah! Sophomore year, she's seen a couple more swings. So I'm curious to see Ruby Malin. She is handling business in the circle. I'm curious to see if Coach Tar will let her, let her go both ways maybe next year potentially. But I mean, okay, as a freshman, if you're ninth in all time strikeouts as a freshman with a freshman catcher behind you, I think that's a very important part of this battery. Having a great pitcher is so important because she has the movement, she has the speed. But sometimes if you have great movement and a catcher who can't handle it behind the plate, that pitch that moves very far doesn't get called a strike unless that catcher is able to frame it very quietly behind the plate, being able to have that presence. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout here for Malin. Make it four. Ruby Malin found her screwball, brought it back up in the zone. And has it hit her? That is a hard spot to hit. It's right in that gap, right where the mid thigh, right where the hips are. It's a hard spot to get your hands cleared through. And she knows that and she's exploiting a weakness right here and now. Well, we have had a, a pretty obvious pitcher's duel. And I think both pitchers doing what they do best for McNeese, their entire roster. They don't really strike players out. They're more of a ground ball team, and hence why their defense has to be so strong. And then for Malin, she is a high strikeout player, evident by some of the stats we just showed. And, and so we're <laughs> seeing both players really come into their own in this game. The problem and the difference is that Alchin just crushed home run. And whenever you have two really good teams going back and forth, the game is literally won and lost in one pitch, two pitches, three pitches, something like that. Very small. Paints that inside edge perfectly. One, two, this one slams. It's gonna drop in on the left field side, and that's a nice little knock for Arjuan. At last night to Grand Canyon in their own regional. This one a little bouncer, trying to turn two, and they'll get a force out, Washington will. Good heads up there by Espinoza. She knows the speed that Seneca has. And she knows the speed that was also on first before. I'd rather have speed on first than speed on second, especially if there's another little hitter like that. So by the time it's caught, her first reaction is to go to second. And that's what you want to see from a defense is always looking ahead. How can I be better? Going back to that conversation as well. Well, we're going to see Washington just take a beat, have a quick meeting in the circle. What do you think they're discussing? You know, just this is our game plan. We talked to Washington and they mentioned we just like to have timely timeouts. It's not because the pitcher's struggling or there's something very important and pressing that we need to tell, but sometimes we just like to call a timeout, use our timeout, talk to our team, set the pace. We control the pace of the game. That That is Washington's mindset and mentality. So I think that's what that was just there. They got the hit, got another hit, got the lead out, but still two hits in a row. Let's slow down that pace a little bit and reset. First pitch to Reyna is a strike. 
Yeah, we were told Washington games tend to take a little bit longer because <laughs> of that. Also, they're a pretty high scoring team, so I think that plays into it. And, you know, Pac-12, there's just a lot of great offensive players, so it will breed some long games, which is great for Washington fans really getting their money's worth. I don't think anything is going to be longer than that McNeese game we saw yesterday. It was four hours off the top of my head, four hours, 14 minutes long. I think it's safe to say that that will be that will be our longest game. Well, you better knock on wood. I'm knocking. One one to Reina, swing and a miss. Seneca is going to stay put. My crew behind me say, don't say that. <laughs> as a softball player, you have your superstitions. Now I'm learning as a broadcaster, I also need to have my superstitions. So <laughs> I'm still getting the hang of it there, but I'm learning. I'm learning as I go, right? Well, of course, four strikeouts for Malin. She's got 10 swings and misses as well in this game. Trying run on the base pass though for the Cowgirls. Trying to drive it home. One, two, swing and miss. Uh, Seneca goes, but it doesn't matter. It's over. <laughs> Coach for the Cowgirls. Coach, it's been hard going up against Malin. What's your message to this team to try to get some more offense? Yeah, we, we got to be on time for pit. We, we keep chasing the pitch up. You know, we got to get ourselves to a good leverage count, be able to get, make good contact right now. She's doing a great job of, of changing elevation on us and changing our eyes. We got to do a better job just sticking to the game plan and finding something we hit through the middle of the field. Coach, the Huskies in the second inning only scored one, but had a couple of hard hits. What is the pitching strategy? Where are you wanting to locate to you know, get these swings and misses? <laughs> what a great question, right? <laughs> we just got to keep them off balance. We can't let their, their bats go on and keep a fast bat. We got to find a way to slow down their bats a little bit. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, again, James Landrino, head coach for McNeese. Well, he said keep them off balance. And my mind as a hitter, as a former pitcher, also go to change-ups. We're going to see a lot more change-ups these next few innings. We've seen Sanders. She has a really good change-up. And a lot of times, Washington, they freeze on that pitch. In the interview with Heather Tarr, she said, we've been really eager. They've had fast at-bats, early at-bats. Six of Washington's 11 at-bats have been with three or fewer pitchers. So I'm, I'm seeing it, and it's okay if you're seeing it. As we saw, some of them went over. But you want to make sure whenever you do swing, it's your pitch that you're hunting, just like that one right there. That's going to drop in for Husky, an opening hit for Washington here in the top of the fourth. This is the second hard hit line drive that Husky has. That pitch low in the zone, tight in on the hands. She's just able to turn that hip get those hands out in front. The contact was made close to the front of the box. That's not her overextending or being early. It's just knowing that pitch location. If her hands aren't out in front, that pitch is a hard one to get a hold of. Lynch lays down a bunch. Sanders picks it up, goes to first, but it does its job as Husky moves to second and scoring position. Here comes Alchin, already has a homer today. In her last three at-bats, she has two home runs and a single. Not bad. Alchin's just taking her time getting in. This is a big moment. You don't want to feel rushed. You want to have the right headspace. But look at this defense right here. A lot of space in those gaps, especially that right center gap. And there's that changeup we were looking for. I want to see a couple back to back because I, I don't think Washington is expecting that. They're still going after that higher pitch. Throw them off speed with that. I, I think that would be really effective, especially against a hitter like Olchin, going 
off speed going away in the zone. Crushes one, foul territory. Moreno on her way and it's missed. That's foul. <laughs> no. <laughs> that one, that's a long run for Alea Seneca, the right fielder, but I think that she needs to call off that pitch from Torres, the second baseman. If you're second baseman running back over your head, that is too far. Look, Seneca is right there. She needs to call her off, be very aggressive and assertive. It's much easier not only to make that catch, but you have a runner standing on second with one out. And knowing Washington, they're going to tag and go to third. As an outfielder, your body is moving in. That's a much easier throw. Well, we saw that yesterday for McNeese. Again, we talk about what they can do defensively. They're so good, but the, the one problem that they've had was just some communication issues. Again, it's very loud in here, so I think that's playing a part in it because we saw Reyna collide uh, with Bouvier yesterday, and that ended up being an error that scored a run. They got it back against Minnesota, but you just don't want that to be a trend, especially against Washington, who can make you pay for something like that. It's going to be the extra bases. It's going to be the little things added up that's going to make a team win it or lose it here. This is a tight game. It's 1-0. You don't want to give a team like Washington any advantage. This one ripped in right field. Here comes a run, and it scores. Trouble getting it at the wall. Alchin all the way to third. She slides in. Heather Tarr telling Olchin to get down. I think she was pretty much on the ground herself. But this one, Alea Sakina, far, far off that line. You can see it get past her, not able to get her glove down in time. And that is why Olchin is able to get all the way to third. But this crowd is fired up. Just take a listen. This is not an environment that I would want to be playing in right now if I'm McNeese. But they're competitors. So they may hear it and go, you know what, that was big, but right on. Her final line, I mean, again, all things considered against Washington, it's pretty good. Allows two runs. And that will turn to Whitney Tate who pitched essentially a full game yesterday for McNeese. She came in in, I hesitate to call it, relief. Well, she's a senior with something to prove. This one in the infield, throw to first. But it's going to be another run for Washington. And that was according to plan. That ball was intended to hit that ground hard. We know how hard this field is for Washington and they use it to their advantage. They have a runner on third who has a ton of speed. We just saw her get around the bases to third. But look, as soon as she sees it hit down on the ground, Olchin is going. Because she knows even if the second baseman mentally is prepared, she's going to beat that out. And then Olchin, she doesn't even have to slide. It's an easy score for her. But McNeese is able to get the second out, and that's big. Is not, not let one moment snowball into another, into another, into another. That's how you reset. You're going to have to recoup anyways, but you want to keep this out of 3-0. It's right there from Tate. Yeah, and if you're Washington, just the chance to add another run, you're going to do that. So you have some cushion moving forward for the rest of this game. This one, a chopper handled nicely by Bouvier. She throws it low, but it is an out. So Holtorf goes down, but a big inning for Wash. Also drafted in the WPF, so. Several, but Klingler, she's gonna join quite a few fellow Huskies and myself yeah. this summer <laughs> as we play in Chicago. But we saw in that video, Sis Bates making an incredible catch. She was a shortstop here a few years ago. 
played against her more times than I would like to count. I like playing with her than against her. Hopefully, uh, I'll get to say the same for Klingler. Yeah, speaking of Bates, Tar told us there was, you know, just a, a feeling after she left of how will we ever replace her? And she said, you can't replace her, but there was kind of a down feeling. And then Holdorf comes in and she says, look, they're totally different, but we just love the way that Holdorf plays. They do different things well, but she really feels like her ceiling is kind of Bates high. High praise from Tar there as that one's chopped over to third. Easy out for Washington as Gomez goes down. I think sometimes whenever there's such an incredible player who's been there for so long, who has been the face of a program for so long, whenever they leave, sometimes players might feel like they have to fill those shoes. They can be intimidated. They can get caught up in being that player. I love the fact that Hultor is different because whenever you try to play like somebody else, you don't have your own identity. You don't have your own style. You're never going to reach your full potential because you're reaching, you're trying to reach somebody else's potential. So Hortorf really embracing that. You can see her arm stronger than Sis Bates. She doesn't quite have the same arm angles, but she's able to have really good range and make throws that Sis maybe not, might not have. And there's pros and cons to each. High foul territory, Lynch. Doesn't get it. She's had a lot of action over there at that first base net. She's getting real acquainted with that McNeese softball team right there. That's a hard play to make. If you're a first baseman, important thing to do, find that net first. It looked like the last few seconds she was a little tentative the last two steps. Kind of looked at her glove. Hey, what, what the heck happened there? Last time we saw a fly ball, though, it was a nice little shot that turned into a triple, so let's see what happens here. Well, there hasn't been a ton of hits for either team in this game so far. Five combined, but McNeese just has the two. And I would say the difference with those two runs, not only the one that Olchin hit in, but the one that she herself came in on was that error. You make that out, which you should have. You make that out, you don't have that run score, and then later on, you don't have a runner at third on a really difficult play to make as a second baseman running in, hard angle, difficult angle to throw to home. You're not put in that situation as a team. 2-2 two, two count to Phillips here. Gomez already retired. The offering skied weird spot but Klingler's there hung up there for long enough playing the WNBA they are a lot of fun to watch I think just female sports in general there's a lot of passion behind them I don't know personally that's why I like to watch them I love to see the raw emotion the passion it's it's kind of unfiltered a little bit you can really see these women out here laying it all on the line and just really enjoying themselves and they're not shy to expose that and express it <laughs> torres goes around on that one yeah we're certainly seeing you know passion from the fans as well here in mayhem big crowds <laughs> a lot of passion indeed yeah strength to end this inning. Oh, that one pops out of the glove of Stewart. Ooh, Malin, really efficient as well. A lot of strikeouts, a lot of swings and misses. 
This is pitch 60 right here. We'll see if it ends the inning and continues the efficiency. It won't. This one soars back towards us in the press box. So the last two batters, Gomez had a ground ball, Phillips a fly out. This is their second time through the lineup. First time through, both of them struck out. So there's that feeling of, wow, I'm not used to this. I, I wasn't expecting a certain thing. Second time up, I know what I need to do, making those adjustments. I'm curious to see as the second time through the lineup goes, what it looks like. Yeah, Malin has 12 complete games this year. So I'm sure that's the ultimate goal for Washington. And again, if you win this game, you don't have to play later tonight. That's always a plus. Yes. <laughs> you can go home early night, too, with this game being the first one, and really relax after a late one yesterday. 2-2. Two -two. Did she go? No. Good eye there. That one high, high above her head. Or is able to keep that barrel back. Nice hip action. But yeah, keeping that barrel back, not breaking the wrist. Not only avoiding the double header, but also avoiding having to play two games if necessary in the championship. That is what is on the line today. That time it is a strike. A little delayed, but it will. Again, and the inning sent us to the top of the fifth of the fifth inning. Malin again has been dealing. She's got six strikeouts and Alshin, another strong offensive performance for her. And for the Cowgirls, you know, just really struggling to get anything going offensively. And that's been the issue so far. Biggest thing is that error out in right field. Not only did that come back to Haunt them as that hit, that next pitch, scored a run. That person also came in to score herself, Jalen Olchin. Hit him in, score him in. Well, we just saw Fiedler come in and quickly get out. That's Kinsey Fiedler, Fiedler, excuse me, who came in yesterday to pinch run as well for Washington. And just a brief stint. Replaced Stewart for the time being. It's going to be Brooklyn Carter. Again, the Carter Klingler recipe was the key to success yesterday. Just some light hits to get Carter on, and then a massive hits for Klingler to drive her home. And with her speed, even if she's at first, if you get it deep enough, she's going to score. Even something kind of shallow, she has a decent chance. Both hitters, great back control in very different ways. But something that Washington puts a lot of emphasis on as hitters, does it matter if you're a slapper, a bunner, a swinger, being able to have control of your barrel. If you're able to have control of your barrel, you can handle tough pitches, you can handle high pitches, low pitches, it gives you a lot more confidence at the plate to go and attack whatever it is you're swinging at. Whitney Tate has been solid since she came in. She came in with Alchin already at third, and so Espinoza just hard off the ground and a ground out that drove that run home, so not going to be tagged on her, ultimately. Yeah, that one was definitely a called play before that pitch. You could see Coach Heather Tark call a sign, look down at her signal, and to me, I knew it was a called pitch by the way that Whenever that out happened, the way the team came out of the dugout, the way they embraced each other after scoring that run, it, it was very intentional. We want to score the run. I'm willing to sacrifice myself. Oh, there's a pretty rare strikeout for Whitney Tate. 
The Knees is a ground out team, but why not if you can? Hey, if you got it, take it. Yeah, in 13 innings yesterday, one strikeout for McNeese. <laughs> and yet, you know, pretty low scoring, come up with a victory. A big first swing by Bailey Klingler. She does not swing and miss often. She has a contact rate of over 95% as a hitter. That is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, when we talk about strikeouts, Klingler just not strike out. She's only done it five times as that one just lined over to first. Moreno has it. And, and but lots of good storylines in Oregon beat Arkansas as well, which was uh, something that was important as this one is a nice job by Husky. The sprints in to make the snag. This one squared up very nice by Bouvier. Look at that. But Husky, she is able to get a quick jump on that. A little bit too much in the air to be able to drop down. Nice pitch from Malin to start in her battle with Moreno. For McNeese, this is a team that after yesterday's win is on an 11 game winning streak. Of course, they won the Southland Championship. Final score is one to nothing and came down to a walk off homer from Reese Reyna. But that's on the line here, as is the rest of their weekend. If they lose, then they'll have to play in an elimination game later tonight. Cowgirls on a hot streak, won 19 of the last 21 games. Just because they're down, we've seen them be down before and come back and fight and scrape and battle. That's what they did in their conference tournament to be able to even get to this regional to be in this position, won their first game, had to come back several times. It wasn't just once. A 3-0, that's a decent lead, but it's not overwhelming, and I feel like that's very doable for McNeese. Again, if they can get a multi-hit inning. So far, it's only been one here, one there. If they can string together three hits, they will score. One, two, fouled off. The problem is for McNeese is that Malin's been cooking really since she came in opening inning. Just has not looked like a freshman in the circle at all. And she's been so efficient too. You look at her numbers, we're in the bottom of the fifth and she is about to throw her 70th pitch. Six strikeouts. Only two hits. Right. The problem is Ruby Malin is very good at what she does. <laughs> but she does know how to spin it. Ruby Malin dominant in the circle today. And very fired up. Goes up with the rise ball, has a change up. Down in the zone with a drop ball. She can hit all quadrants. But most of those strikeouts on that inside half for McNeese there. Maybe take a step or two off the plate. Because with that speed, it can feel, the radar says 67, 68, 69, but it can feel like it's 70, 71, 72, 73. Step off the plate, you can see that is a strategy here for McNeese. So they're able to have a little bit more time and space to get the barrel out in front of them. 
one two offering that's going to be a fly that lands in the bullpen nobody getting warm for mcneese seems like it's tate's game for the rest of the way now this is ruby malin versus right-handed hitters you can see very dominant on that inside half that 14.5 percent she lives in that screwball corner then a lot of pitches down and in up and in off the plate and then that rise ball tight in on those hands that is the name of the game for her big hack and a miss make it strikeout number seven 10 percent down in that low zone right there and she goes right back to it Seven strikeout today, second one in that area. And just look at the way this ball tumbles off of that zone. As a hitter, it is hard to defend the high, the middle, and the low. Ruby Malin controlling all three very, very well today. Otto now, she already struck out today. We talked about the passion. Just watch her reaction to this one. She loves this strikeout call. And I love how she's talking to her catcher. I want that call not just for me, but for you, for my team as well. Well, what's been so impressive too is just the control. She had that one wild pitch, but other than that, no walks, which anytime you can not give that gift to it, especially a team like McNeese <laughs> that's going to run. It's going to put you in a good gift. Yeah. I think also something that Washington players said is this year we have a lot of safety language. And no matter what they're going through, they say this often all the time. We're happy to be here. Because at the end of the day, whether you go 4 for 4 or 0 for 4, they're just happy to be here on the field with their teammates. I feel that kind of freedom and that looseness to be happy to be there, to be able to express what it is that's going on if you need help, if you have a question about something and not have to worry about what a teammate's going to say in return. That safety language is going to create an environment of learning. It's going to create an environment of safety. And then it's just going to continue to build and build. And that is what you're seeing on the field right now with this Washington team. 3-0. There's a strike. 67% of her pitches have been strikes today. Or foul. So McNeese is obviously the home team today, not actually the home team, but they are going to bat like it, which means that they're going to get a couple more chances after this bottom of the fifth inning. But I feel like for Landrino and his side, it's the clock is ticking a little bit to figure it out. And I don't think Malin's going anywhere for the rest of this game. Soaring into the crowd, actually past it, left field side. Ten pitches so far this inning, is that right? All set. Seven in the at-bat. Oh, it's a perfect day here, Husky Softball Stadium. We did have a breeze at the beginning, but it's kind of gone away. It's still very comfortable weather. It's not too hot at all. Again, a chopper. Espinoza picks it up, zips to first. The inning is over. And Malin is having a phenomenal game. The freshman with seven strikeouts. They've had to come 
Uh, Tate, a senior, again, back in the circle. That's her family. Her father, Robbie, her mom, Christy, is here as well, and then her two grandparents. And Robbie was a pitching coach for McNeese, and so they work together. That has to be special whenever right. you get to play with your dad. Or not, it depends on what you, yeah, how you view it, but I, I just think the bond that you create and that time that you get to spend together and how special it must be for him to just sit back and be a fan and be a dad. Fly in a left field for Reynolds. Underneath is Otto, and she's retired. Big smile from her. She's done a good job since the fourth inning whenever she came in. Minimizing damage, getting quick outs. Washington swinging early in counts against her. 15 of the 20 batters have swung early. Well, Tate's retired six straight as well. Here's Husky, last time she was up in the fourth, knocked a single, then was driven home by Alchin, and then some of the issues in right field <laughs> that McNeese was having. Last two at bat, she's had line drives, just absolute shots. She's seeing the ball really well, and whenever I look at it, it's often that is where in that fourth inning, a lot of things turned around. All started by that hit. In a center field, Arjuan underneath. Not this time, though. The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, June 1st at 12 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2023 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Well, for this Washington team, looking to get back to the World Series in Oklahoma City for the first time since 2019. And for McNeese, a little bit different. This side is just, they're trying to get out of a regional. Again, they've been here three years in a row. So this group, seniors like Tate, they're sick of regionals. They want a super regional. Both of them hungry. But I think you see that from a lot of teams, not just here in Seattle, but across the country and regionals. The game has evolved and changed. That one nice, just floating in there. But now for teams, you don't just have to be a power five and make it to the World Series. I think of James Madison making a huge impact, a, a huge wave in college softball back in 2001. You've seen a lot of upsets since then. You don't have to be a power five to be good. Yeah, and then James Madison kind of has turned that into a lot of success because Emily Phillips, who's in this game for McNeese, was on that team that went to the World Series in 2021. Whenever you have that mindset of, I expect to be there, I expect to do this, it changes your outlook on your team. It changes how you practice. Oh, trying to paint that outside corner doesn't quite work out for Tate. The thing that Tate does so well as a pitcher is work low in the zone. She has a full count here, but she's confident to throw a strike, get a hard hit ground ball. She's all right with that because she knows what her defense can do. Three, two, swing and a miss. Three up, three down inning for Tate. She's got two strikeouts. We're a couple of innings away from that. And of course, a 30 minute break. As McNeese trying to launch a comeback. They've been scoreless this entire game and they've only mustered up two hits. 
we're going to see a defensive change for Washington. It's going to be Brooke Nelson who will replace Kelly Lynch at first base. Again, Malin's been dealing. Hasn't walked a batter, seven strikeouts, scoreless. I mean, everything you could want, two hits allowed. One of those knocks, though, Arjuan had, and it was the harder of the two. One, one, up the middle again, and she finds a gap. Arjuan on her way to second, trying to take two slides and safe. And that is the aggression that you love to see from McNeese. That is what you're familiar with seeing. Not anything overpowering, just hard hits in the gap and extra bases right there. McNeese starting off with the leadoff on. And a runner in scoring position. And now they've got Seneca up. Again, three hits yesterday. We know what she can do. But sometimes it's just somebody has your number, and for some reason it's been Arduan today against Malin. It takes what it takes. In the last two games versus Washington, Nice is only 7 for 39. Not a ton of hits. This one a hopper. Klinger has it. And it will mean that Arjuan heads to third. But there's one gone. But Klingler is so good defensively. We saw her yesterday get a double play, and it was pure athleticism that she had off her glove, went down to the ground to ultimately get that first out, and then just flings it over to second so nonchalantly. <laughs> it was almost, it caught everyone off guard, I think. But she knew it was going to happen. She knew. Yeah. <laughs> well, Reese Reyna, she has been in the hot seat the past few games. And when the opportunity is there, she has been the one who has delivered for her team a few times. Walk off home runs, base hits. Finds herself in the box with only one out and a runner on. That one tight. Good eye. For McNeese, they only have two more opportunities. So it is the bottom of the six, and then they have the bottom of the seven. Right now, it is 3-0 Washington. But having that discipline to not swing at that pitch, that forces Ruby Malin to come down in the zone. Their goal, score at least one this inning. Score one. Ooh, almost to us. <laughs> Had that trajectory, but it ultimately <laughs> dropped. I might have just reached out and closed my eyes. Yeah, I flinched. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> For Reyna, again, we mentioned the home run to win the Southland Championship, and that's a core memory for the rest of her life. But she hit two home runs in the Southland Conference Championship, and she had never done that before on the season, no home <laughs> runs. And so in the tourney, she just uh, turned up a notch. Also hit 500 over the course of that tournament, but Malin get, the catches her looking. And that is a huge strikeout right there. Ruby Malin claims her eighth. But look at this first pitch. Strike down the middle. This one up in the zone. And then a little bit lower, but still up. Fouls off. And then that one frozen on the inside half. Ruby Malin prefers that inside but she has to be able to go on all levels, and that is what she did. Fantastic job in control. I think sometimes the McNeese hitters get so caught up in that high pitch, high pitch, high pitch that they actually freeze on that screwball waist high. Eight strikeouts for Malin now. No outs to give for McNeese, says Gomez. Just gets a piece of that one. Mm. 
the reason why that inside half is so effective for Ruby Malin is because of her speed. I mean, we're in the bottom of the six. She's at 90 pitches. That pitch was 68 miles an hour. She's not slowing down. She's able to go the distance and maintain her speed. And again, another hard pitch up in the zone. Gomez not able to lay off that pitch. She's been swinging at that pitch all night. If I'm Ruby Malin, I'm staying up in that zone because she's not touching it. First inning, McNeese had a runner at third, did not bring it home. In danger of doing that again here in the bottom of the six. One, two. That's a little high. Washington fans were ready to get up for that. Okay, I'm calling it screwball waist high. That's been her strikeout pitch several times today. Two, lightly hit over to Klingler, picks it up, throws to first. And once again, despite a leadoff double, McNeese leaves a runner stranded at third. Washington still holding them scoreless as we head to the seventh inning. I mean, we just saw UCLA lose last night, so I mean, I think this is anybody's, I mean, the problem is you gotta get out of the regional. Absolutely, it's anybody's game today, and that is what we are seeing all across the country. But I think Oklahoma, what they do is never take a pitch off. Behind us, Washington, they have not taken a pitch off today. Same thing with Oklahoma. They defeated Missouri handily. Oh, well, that's going to be an opening hit there. And who else? It's Alchin. Oklahoma, they love to have that kind of suppressing feel on the field. And right now, Washington, especially Jaden Olchin, who is three for three, that feels very suppressing, very suffocating, the way Washington has been playing so far this regional. They're not messing around. Actually, Tate, she retired the past eight hitters, all the hitters that she faced up until Olchin. Well, no one has really been able to stop Olchin in this regional. She's got five hits in a row now, dating back to the last game. At least it's a single, and she does have two home runs, I guess. <laughs> if you're McNeese, that's how you have to view it. Espinoza, it's a positive. Showed bunt there, a little pump from Phillips behind the plate. This one down the third base side, thrown to first, and there's an out. Espinoza retired. You can see Ruvier kind of had her chest on that one. That one's my bad. There was a play at second base. Reese Reno was standing on the bag. Looks like she might have been able to get that out, get the lead runner out. But Washington still able to advance that leadoff hitter out to second, now in scoring position. Oh. McNeese, number one in the country in double plays turned. Didn't get one there. And that's a strategy that Washington's had all game long of how can I just move my runner base to base? This one smoked, and it's gonna drop in. Oh, that's gonna drop in foul. It did drop in foul. Dropped in <laughs> foul. to the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> that is right where we got a pull. So you take, yeah, smiling. I like that call. 
This one as close as close can get. But you can see where it bounced there. It, it was a little bit to the left of the line. As an outfielder, sometimes whenever the ball goes to drop, I think, I know I can't catch it, but if I run hard enough to the foul pool, then maybe the ball will do the same thing. I don't know. Tell me if that's real or not. <laughs> Over to short. Reyna has it. Throws to first. There's two outs. The aggression by Olchen on that. She could have been stuck at second, but she noticed that ball was soft. It wasn't hit hard, and Reese Reyna was deep. Feet almost in the grass. Watch her. The ball's hit, and she takes off right there. Reese Reyna kind of double checks, but by then, Olchen's two, three steps away from the bag. There's no play there. The aggression, the pursuit, the suffocation that Washington has done on the bases today has put them up three up. Well, Tate still has a chance to keep this scoreless if she can retire Stewart. already going to be a tough bottom of the seventh inning, but if this run comes through, you just wonder if McNeese has it in him. This timeout by Phillips, very timely. Three balls in a row, uncharacteristic of Tate. Not a lot of walks from her. Couple yesterday, but nothing really came of it, obviously, because <laughs> it was extra innings and we were <laughs> in a stalemate. Defense playing very deep, not just in the infield, but outfield as well. Trying to make this last out and head to the bottom of the seventh. Oh, there's a strike, paints the outside corner. strike same spot just like that she battles back 59 miles an hour nice little floater in there payoff just barely tapped it on the field right now just kind of dead kind of quiet last ga last game that they played was a long one but energy was high and sometimes hard to keep it up after a game that long payoff again just got a little bit outside that's tough for team is framed pretty nicely for Phillips. He wanted that one. Well, again, this is the NTA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. Man of you. We have the lake, we have the field. 
Coach Tarr is smiling. All is well right now for Washington. We'll have a pitch hitter up as well. well. That is what you want the opponent to feel whenever they play in your house, whenever they come to you, whenever you are up 3-0 with runners on first and third. You want them to feel your presence. Well, we've got Johnson now with four home runs and 18 RBI on the year. She was also on the Pac-12 All-Freshman team in 2022. So this is a player that's pretty strong. Usually she rotates with Stewart at the catcher spot. Uh, we haven't seen it yet this weekend. Pushed into the netting. So the loser of this game has to play another game tonight. If the score holds, McNeese is the one who will have to play that doubleheader. But right now, Tate, their ace, after throwing a full game yesterday and half a game today, she's pretty spent. So their options are limited, but I, I bet you that they go with number three, Ashley Lejo. But the strategy and the planning behind it, you have to know matchups. And if you're Northern Colorado, you're looking at that pitching lineup, the staff that McNeese has, and you're going, yeah, the options that they have available to throw, they're limited as well. Chopped over to Bouvier at third. Picks it up, throws to first, and it ends the inning. So Alton does not score. No runs come through for Washington. And there's one final chance for McNeese to get back in this game. Bottom of the seventh on the other side. She's placed Washington in this position, especially her second at bat where she got that triple, scored a run, and then came in to score herself. That's two of the three runs. Washington, they're up 3-0. Without Jalen Olchin in this lineup, it could be a 0-0 ball game. Well, they just stranded her at third. Did not add a run, the Huskies. And so now it comes down to Malin if she can keep McNeese off the board or at least from scoring three runs. It's going to be Phillips, Torres, and Bouvier. That's a group trying to launch a comeback here at Husky Softball Stadium. Again, this is not an elimination game. Both of these teams won yesterday, but it does mean whoever loses this is gonna play later tonight, the winner of Minnesota and Northern Colorado. And for the winner, get to go home, get a good night's sleep, and play tomorrow for a chance to win this entire regional. That's another ball for Malin. Down in the count, 3-0. Paints that inside edge. Ball four, so the first walk that Malin has given up, she does it on the first batter here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Big time for McNeese. Get that leadoff runner on. They do that very well. We saw that yesterday. They've had the leadoff runner on a few times today, not too many. But being able to bring that runner around to score, that is where they've run into trouble. Twice they've had a runner at third with less than two outs. Neither time were they able to score. And now they need more than one, they need three. Mariana Torres has struck out twice today. One of eight for Malin. Again, we talked about performance of the game. I think Malin, you can make a case for her, especially if she 
holds on to a shutout. She's staring at the potential 13th complete game for her this season. Another strike. You can see the frustration on Torres' face right there as she takes that pitch. Just kind of a deep breath. That has been a strike all game long. You have to be ready for that pitch. You have to be sitting it, because that is one that you're going to get most consistently. Say you get three pitches, four pitches in that bat, two or three of them will be that pitch. So if you're not ready for it, you're just giving away free strikes. You love, you always love whenever it's double strikes to balls. That one was way high. Torres had to move out of the way. <laughs> One, two, over to third. Espinoza scoops it up, fires to first. They've got one gone. This one, Espinoza, whenever she fielded that, good five feet behind that bag. With two strikes, the threat of small ball is out of the question. They just want to get three outs here. One down, two more to go. Here, Washington, you've played a very clean game. Taking advantage of mistakes that McNeese has made. So Cherry on top has had clean defense these last two outs. Lightly over to Nelson, who's just going to tag Phillips up. So down to their final out here, McNeese. Bouvier is down, who was hard to get out yesterday. Phillips is over at third now, and the fans are on their feet here. Husky Softball Stadium, they can taste victory. Coach here calling timeout, talking with his infield, talking with his pitcher. Again, setting that timing on their grounds, we're going to see a pitch hitter as well. Number four, Lopez. Kind of big moment for her to come into. Not an elimination game, but winner gets to go onto the championship, gets to sit pretty, and most importantly, does not have to play another game tonight. It's Kaylee Lopez. Stepping up, he said, a big moment. Final out. Phillips over at third. As a hitter in this moment, your only thought, see the ball, hit the ball. Whenever you try to be the hero, often doesn't work out too well. Try to hit something hard here, just get a single. Wild, here's a chance for McNeese to score, they do! Well, Phillips oh, that was races <laughs> home on that. The easiest RBI. <laughs> right. That's the second wild pitch for Malin, the only kind of thing that she's had a problem with today, and it hasn't been that big of a deal. But it does allow a run, and. Again with two outs. One thing to note is that McNeese won their Southland Conference Championship with two outs. They're not phased by that on the scoreboard. Andrano looking on. Two zero to Lopez. There's a strike. Yeah. 
two, one. Fouled off. One more strike needed for Malin. And you can feel it here at this point. Defense. Whenever you're on the field at this moment, one strike away. Kind of smile to yourself a little bit and say, all right, here we go, Ruby. Let's finish it. One oh, pitch right here. It was loud. Now it's really, really loud. Two, two, swing and a miss. Just got a piece of it. He'll throw it down anyway. Malin, nine strikeouts on the day. A complete shutout for Washington. Or excuse me, a run comes through for McNeese at the bitter end, but it's not enough for the Cowgirls to come back in this game. They will play later tonight against the winner of Minnesota Northern Colorado on the other side. Washington moves on to the final tomorrow. Ruby Malin, what an incredible game. The freshman did not look like she was new here. She settled in quickly from the start. She definitely has some fans. <laughs> but a well-fought game by McNeese. You are in 